three primary displays, that touch screen displays that we use to control resilience. And so we can bring up our procedures, we can bring up maps that show where we are uh, over uh, over the earth. And uh, it's actually uh, quite nice, the touch, the touch screens that we have here for controlling uh, resilience. We also have some backup uh, controls here, buttons, um, so that if anything should happen to these displays, we still have some of the critical functionality that we can we can accomplish uh, with these these buttons that you see here. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much it here in the uh, in the cockpit. And so now I'm going to pass you off to Ike. Hello, everyone. Victor here. Baby Yoda and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, hatches. Just about 24 hours ago, we entered resilience through this side hatch and to open that hatch again until we are safely uh, splashed down in the ocean and the recovery forces are bringing us uh, aboard the ship and taking us out of the capsule. Uh, so when we dock to station, we will actually leave and go into ISS through the forward hatch, which is uh, up here. And it's based on the body axis of the, the spacecraft, so the nose cone opens forward and, and you can go into station in that direction. And at this time, I'm going to hand you off to, Sh to Soichi. And Suichi, for awareness, we're not getting audio from you currently. I'm sorry. Hey, uh, uh, good evening and uh, konbanwa. Uh, this is Suichi Noguchi. I'm now talking through the uh, lower tier of the capsule. Many people see the seat, but uh, Dragon Capsule has amazing vast area of storage. And I'm now about to, uh, sitting over the uh, uh, mid-deck lockers, and uh, this is quite a roomy area. There might be some other creatures kind of slowly coming through you. And this is also a very important uh, stuff. Uh, this is the uh, storage area for the EVA equipment for, for us when we go up. And this is actually powered payload, and it is now powered, and it's uh, like a refrigerator which holds uh, ice cream. No, 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 uh, science material. Right. Science material for the ISS. Right. Okay, that's the vast uh, uh, storage area underneath our seat. Now I'm going to turn over to Shannon. All right. Thank you, Suichi. Um, as you can see, with the four of us in this uh, Dragon capsule, it's quite a bit more crowded than it is, was with just Doug and Bob. And so I thought I would show you some of what it's like to actually live on a spacecraft like this. You'll see that we actually have um, bags stowed all over the place, and this is for a number of reasons. You can pan over here, Suichi, you will see up here we actually have some bags full of our emergency equipment and we've got bags that hold our um, supplies, such as the shirts and pants that we are wearing now came up in these bags. Um, you'll also see that we've got things st such as food and water stashed around because every once in a while we like to have a snack. A little bit later on I'm going to have some trail mix. Um, these are the water bottles that we have to drink out of. You can see it can be a little bit challenging because there is uh, air mixed in. After you drink some of your water, you've got air in there, so you may wonder, well, how do you drink the water and not just the air? So, in order to drink water on the Dragon, you have to open it up, and then you have to gently rotate to get the water up near the top, and then you can take a drink. And the rest of the time, you can just play with your air bubbles. So, that's basically what daily life is like. We sort of dance around each other to try and stay out of each other's way, uh, eat and drink, and wait for the next engine burn. So at this time, I'm going to hand you back over to Mike. Okay, thank you, Shannon, and uh, Suichi and Victor. And so 
I tell you, we're going to uh, we're going to close out uh, this little tour of uh, Dragon Resilience here with something uh, very very special. Actually, um, this is something that is a tradition within the uh, within the astronaut office. And uh, just to give you a little history on it, so when you first are selected as an astronaut and uh, you come in for your basic training, you go through about two years of training to become an astronaut. And then once that is complete and you graduate, we give um, the, each, uh, each candidate now becomes an astronaut, but they're an unflown astronaut, and they get a silver pin. But once you've passed that 100-kilometer mark, you then get a gold pin. And we have one member of our crew who uh, does not have the appropriate uh, accoutrement for his <laughs> uniform, and so it's we're very to be able to give Victor Glover his gold astronaut pin for passing 100 kilometers. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Crew one. Crew one. Again, uh, thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, this is uh, just an unbelievable experience. Uh, it has been fantastic so far, and we're looking forward. You know, we're about 21 hours into a six-month mission, and so we are we are very excited for us. And uh, and I think I'm just going to close it with all for one, crew one for all. Bye everyone. Hopper, thank you so much, and actually thanks to the entire Resilience crew for that amazing tour and great event. Congratulations, Victor. Uh, you must be so excited. And this concludes the event.